My heart breaks for the people who commit suicide. You know what it is? They find no relief anywhere else except death. There's no answer for them. We don't give it to them. We have failed them. Good to have you back with us, folks. Thanks for watching tonight. This one's hard to comprehend. Oklahoma Senator Tom Coburn failed veterans Monday night in a big way. One of the outgoing senator's final acts was blocking a bill to prevent suicide among our nation's veterans. The Department of Veterans Affairs estimates 22 veterans take their lives every day in this country. The Clay Hunt SAV Act passed with unanimous support over in the House, but was single-handedly blocked by Senator Coburn of Oklahoma. It would have required the VA and Department of Defense to evaluate their health care and suicide prevention programs on a yearly basis. What's wrong with that? It also provided for more community outreach and better online access to mental health services. Republicans always love to wrap themselves in the flag and tell us how they never turn their backs on veterans. Well, it happened on Monday, and it's unfortunate. Here to talk about it tonight is Montel Williams who is a veteran. He is a veterans advocate and Emmy award-winning television host who has served in both the United States Marines and the United States Navy. It's great to meet you. I've nice admired you, your sir. work for years. Uh, your advocacy on this is, is outstanding. What do you make of this? This is hard, this is hard to comprehend. I, I'm completely baffled and, and I can't believe that someone would allow their ego to get in the way of what is our nation's responsibility. You think I'm that's sorry. what it is? I really do. I'm so sorry. He's leaving. So he wants this to be his legacy, that he was the Mr. No, the Dr. No senator. Well, you know what? By saying no, what you've just done is honestly disgrace the service of every service member who served in the Afghanistan-Iraq war and have been putting their lives on their lives to give him an, an opportunity to stand there and make the statement he did. He says in one side of his mouth, we support the soldiers, then hypocritically, or hypocritically, he turns around and then votes against and doesn't even allow it to go to a vote. Last night, I was at the premiere for American Sniper. Wonderful movie. Clint Eastwood was there. There were so many veterans that were in that room. And, and you could see, I was talking to Paul Rykoff, who was one of the guys who really were pushing to get this bill passed. And right before the movie started, he said, you're not going to believe this. But that is on the floor shutting this down. And you could see the sigh in the room before the movie started. Mm -hmm. And how dare he do this? Now, someone might say, well, the Republicans, when they get control, they'll bring it back to have the majority. Coburn won't be there. A <sighs> hundred days from now is probably the best shot. 22 lives a day. 2,200 more soldiers have to die. Thanks for the Christmas present. You know, you, thanks. You, you were really emotionally wrapped up into this, Montel. I see. Soldiers, I talk to them daily. Guys who left body parts behind for us. This is the Christmas present our Congress, I'm sorry, our Congress voted unanimously. Mm -hmm. They voted, they passed the bill. Mm -hmm. This is the Christmas present our government gives to our veterans this year. Tells them, you know what, we'll wait another 100 days to stop the slaughter. I don't know. Man. Why do you think our oh, veterans sorry. from Iraq and Afghanistan are, are coming to an end of life issue like this? What is it about this war? Or is it something that just hasn't had a light shown on it in the past? And what we don't remember as a nation is less than 1% of this nation's population even sent the person off to serve. So less than 0.01%, 2% are actually wearing a uniform, and we sent them back and back and back and back. We wonder why they have post-traumatic stress syndrome. We wonder why their families are in disarray. We wonder why their lines at the VA to get them services, because everyone needs services. Mm -hmm. And again, we say things out of one side of our mouths constantly. The last two speeches ago, where the president said we're working on the suicide rate. Really? What did we go from 23 to 22? Oh, okay, good. And, and you're convinced that this bill and the resources that would have been addressed to this issue, allocated to this issue, would have brought that number down? $22 million. It's cheap mm -hmm. to give it a try. Mm -hmm. I'm not convinced that it would have, would have changed things tomorrow. 
But what it does do, you said those ancillary things, opening up our services, it allows psychiatrists to apply to be psychiatrists for the VA and then being reimbursed for their college tuition. You know, reimbursed, they can get their college tuition paid for it, and then over five years pay it back. So what we have is we will start building a cadre of psychiatrists who understand the issues facing our soldiers today. Let me tell you, go ahead. You wore the uniform. Yes, sir. Do you think that this hurts recruiting? Do you think that this just really leaves a bad taste in the mouth of veterans out there about what they fought for and about what they served for. See, that, that, I, I, think there, I think there's long-term damage here. See, I think the problem is our numbers are up. We have an economy that requires people to look for jobs. And so some of these jobs are really some of the best jobs we have. So, you know, if you look across the board, across all the services, they have met their quotas. Mm -hmm. So, you know, not like guys are running away, but I will tell you what it's going to hurt. It's hurting morale of those who are there now. And right this minute, those are the guys who are going to have to be called back quickly in the emergency situation in Iraq or Afghanistan when something heats up and we put another 3,000 troops on the ground. They're called back immediately. And those guys right now, their hearts are breaking mm -hmm. because they really feel like we got a Senate that doesn't care. Senator Blumenthal, Democrat, says yes. he'll reintroduce the bill if it fails in the Senate. But of course, it's not even going to get a vote. So where does it go from here? Do you have any hope that they, that the, that advocacy work and groundswell support and grassroots support could reverse this? I'm hoping if you follow me at Montel underscore Williams, I'm doing this hashtag pass Clay Hunt. What we're going to do right now is we're going to try to see what kind of pressure we can put on people like Senator Coburn. If you call this number, folks, 202-224-5754, that's Senator Coburn's office number. You tell him how disgusted you are. And let me tell you what's been going on over there, Ed. His office is hanging up on veterans. Yesterday and the day before, when veterans are calling and asking questions, they hang up on them. So I want to make sure that his phone doesn't get any other calls for the next couple days and just tell him to back out of the way. The Senate has done this before. At the last minute, it's last minute, hurrah, go back, throw the last long pass. They need to pass this before they go away for Christmas. If you leave, if you leave Washington, D.C. without passing this bill and giving our guys some hope, how dare you, and you understand, I'm coming, Paul Rykoff is coming, every veteran in this country is coming hard. Elections are coming close, folks. You may have won the last one, you're going to deal with us on the next one. 202-224-5754. Blow his phone up. Montel. Thank you. Great to have you with, Thank you, sir. with us. God bless you for the Thank work you're you doing for the veterans. I Thank appreciate you. it so yes, much. Sir. You're watching The Ed Show. We'll be right back.